To be at the top of your game. So this is a phrase that we use to talk about performing your best, right? So we use this a lot when we're talking about sports or anything where you're giving a performance or you are having to demonstrate your talents. We'll say um, you're at the top of your game if you're doing very well. So for example, um, as an English student, you might say, uh, you know, I'm speaking English so well, I'm learning so much, I feel like I'm at the top of my game. It means that you are speaking English the best you could ever be speaking it. You're at the top of your game. To patch things up, this is a phrase that we use to talk about... Um, Reconciling your differences with somebody, for example, if I'm in an argument with someone and then uh, we decide to reconcile our differences, I could say that I patched things up with this person. Um, another way we use this more literally is like if there's a hole in the wall, like say uh, I'm being a wild party boy and I make a hole in the wall and then I have to, you know, patch it up, like put a patch over it, that would also be patching something up. Or, for example, if you rip your shirt and there's a hole in it and you have to cover it and sew a patch over it, you would be patching that up. So two phrases to be able to talk about something that doesn't meet your expectations or isn't as good as people say it is. The first phrase is, it's not all it's cracked up to be. So we'll say something is not all it's cracked up to be when it's, it's not living up to the expectations that people have set for it. So for example, uh, you might tell me to go see this new movie and I see it and I say, yeah, I saw it. it it's really not all it's cracked up to be, right? Everybody thinks it's the greatest movie or it's hilarious and just wasn't doing it for me. I can say, eh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Another phrase we use that kind of says the same thing is, it doesn't live up to the hype, right? So, eh, it just, it didn't really live up to the hype. Hype is like uh, when people promote something a lot or talk really highly about it. To fall through the cracks. So this is a phrase that we use when we're talking about uh, somebody or something that maybe was neglected or maybe was lost, went astray, right? Uh, we'll say that person fell through the cracks. Um, the most classic example I could think of is say like somebody you grew up with, um, you know, got into some trouble as an adult and maybe ended up in jail. You might say that person fell through the cracks or slipped through the cracks. Um, so you could say it about a person, right? That maybe went astray in life they fell through the cracks or didn't get recognized or noticed or something. Um, we could also use it to talk about a detail. Uh, for example, I was gonna comb my hair today, but that detail seemed to just slip right through the cracks, right? So something that got forgotten. To have a good run. So this is a phrase that we use when you're doing really well and then usually the tables turn and so you say, well, I had a good run. It's like, well, I had a good winning streak, pretty much. So you might say this, like, if you're doing really well in English class, say you're killing it on every test, you're getting A's, scoring 100%, and then you fail one test. You might say, well, I had a good run. To see through someone. Bueno, esa es una expresión que usamos para hablar de que nos... Nos damos cuenta de una persona como esa persona eh, es, como verdadera, la verdadera personalidad de esa persona, lo, los motivos verdaderos, de verdadero, verdadero, estoy perdido, bueno, pero es como si alguien está fingiendo mucho, está siendo como eh, muy fake, eh, podemos decir, oh, I see right through this person. Por ejemplo, si alguien te está haciendo un amigo, eh, pero quieren, quieren otra cosa, tienen otros motivos, 
to Puedes decir, oh, I see right through that person. I see right through that person. Veo a través de esa persona. Si lo traducimos literalmente, no sé si funciona. In case my explanation wasn't quite that adequate and you still haven't gotten it, uh, you could say, for example, this is like literally see-through, right? It's an x-ray. This is see-through. Um, so I can see right through this person. This is what you're literally saying, right? There's a new sheriff in town. So this is a phrase that we use when there's like a new boss or somebody else is in charge. That person might say to you, hey, there's a new sheriff in town. To jump ship. So this phrase is a phrase that we use when we talk about aborting a mission, canceling a plan, uh, or not doing something that you had originally committed to, right? The idea is that you're jumping out of a ship. So see if I can do kind of um, a visual representation of what that looks like. All right, so here's what it looks like to jump ship, literally. So he's... Right, he's literally jumping ship. Hey, are you still coming to my Christmas party, man? No, sorry, man. I think I'm going to jump ship and head home early. Christmas parties aren't really my thing. There's a big party on the beach tonight. Be there or be square. So be there or be square is something we say when we're trying to get people excited about coming to an event. The idea here is that a square is kind of a boring shape, right? It's all even. There's nothing exciting or dangerous about it. So if you're a square, you're someone who doesn't seek adventure. 